Hi, I'm Jamie from Bebendum's customer training team. In this short video, I'd like to tell you about who we are and what we do, the benefits of training, and finally, give a short demonstration of some of our training content. Our philosophy is simple. We want to make wine fun, easy to understand, and accessible to everyone. Our team are learning and development professionals and self-confessed geeks. We aim to inspire passion and confidence to help sell better drinks and improve the customer experience. We do this by delivering effective and relevant training workshops which are interactive and most importantly fun. We have an array of bespoke courses on offer, including Wine Confidence, Train the Trainer and Mindful Winemaking to name a few. As well as our own content, we're an approved programme provider of the more formal and internationally recognised Wine and Spirit Education Trust qualifications. Whatever the specific training needs, we are able to tailor a solution that delivers positive results. The benefits of training are multiple. Not only can we help in increasing sales uplift or helping to change the sales mix, but upskilling staff can help to increase staff retention and ultimately improve the customer experience leading to return business. So to summarise, here's our simple approach to developing a schedule of training. We listen to you and understand your needs. We then create a bespoke programme based upon those needs. We work with you to deliver useful and engaging training. And finally, evaluation of success through analysis. I'd also like to mention one of our case studies demonstrating the positive impact our training can have. JW Lees is a family brewery company based in North Manchester. Alongside the brewery, they also have a regional on-trade presence. The Babendum customer training team were called upon to design and implement training across their managed estate as part of a renewed emphasis on the wine category within the business. Feedback following the academy showed that 100% of attendees either agreed or strongly agreed that they had improved their knowledge of wine. 100% also agreed or strongly agreed that they felt more confident recommending and selling wine to customers. Empirical data also provided compelling evidence that the attendees were building a wine culture within the business as a direct result of training. As you can see here, there was an 11.6% uplift in sales of focus wines following the Wine Academy. So in order to give you an idea of what our training looks like, we've recorded a short section from our Wine Confidence course. Within this section, we cover the principles of how to taste and describe wine. Afternoon, Anna. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, welcome to our Wine Confidence course. So in this section, we're now going to look at um, how to taste and describe wine. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm just going to share um, some slides with you just to lead us through the content. Uh, so the first thing is just to get you thinking about wine words. So we're not talking about really snobby or in-depth language here. I just want you to think about the simple uh, and effective language that we could use to describe how a wine tastes. So to give you some idea of, of what to think about, um, think about any wine list you've ever read that's had descriptions of, of wines on that list. Um, think about, you know, anytime you've picked up a bottle of wine, reading the back label, what are some of those words that, that they might use to describe that wine? Or finally, think about any reviews or discussions in the media, you know, food and wine columns within newspapers, those kind of things. So uh, with that in mind, I'm just going to bring up the next slide, and this is going to be an interactive um, activity that we'll do between us. So I've got a few things up here. Uh, these are some sample words that we might use to describe how a wine tastes. So we've got spicy, heavy, zesty, dry and silky. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to pop myself on mute and I'd like you to have a think about some uh, words. And if you can give me those words, I'll type those in the uh, in the PowerPoint here. So take it away, Anna. What do you think? What are the kind of words that we might That's use to describe wine? Um, maybe lemony or, or citrusy or white wines. Um, uh, other things maybe like um, berries or peaches. Um, 
I suppose maybe full bodied or light. Uh, sweet. Or um, I think some of the ones refreshing, crisp. Um, I think some of the These ones are all fantastic besides Anna. Just thought I'd yeah. dip in there. <laughs> They're you all know, right you're there. definitely on the right track here. Yeah, um, absolutely. Any more for me? Food. Um, I think, I think I've run out. I think that's all I've got. Is that okay? Yep, that's absolutely brilliant. Really, really good start there. Um, yep, we've got a, a, a range of really, really effective language here. Um, you'll notice that as you were suggesting these, I was popping them into different boxes on the screen. Um, do you have any idea why I have separated um, separated these words out? Oh, I've got a typo there. So any idea why I've um, split these up the way that I have? Well, I guess one of them is is like a a flavour, I guess, because if, if it's lemony or berries or peaches, it tastes like something else. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely flavours or or smells, aromas, definitely, yeah. Um, and I guess the silky and smooth, maybe like a texture of the wine, like what That's it feels. Like. Yeah, definitely. They're, you know, silky and smooth. It's they're, they're not flavours, but they're definitely telling us something else about the, the texture or the feel of the wine. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what about zesty, citrusy, refreshing, crisp? Uh, I, I kind of would have maybe picked them towards flavours as well. You know, because if it's something like, I don't know, citrusy, but then I suppose that is kind of, is it like sour? Is it? No, it's not really sour, is it? I don't, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, yeah, you're you're definitely on the right track there. So if I said to you, what does zesty taste like? I mean, zesty itself isn't a very evocative flavour, but think of if we go to, you know, the flavour category, um, out of, you know, what we've got there, spicy, lemony, berries, peaches, what do you think zesty would would sort of draw your mind towards? like acidity maybe is it like 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 a lemon absolutely yeah lemony yeah so we're we're essentially it's reminding of uh, a quality of of a fruit that isn't necessarily a flavor and you you've actually um put it up there um acidity is the is the key word there i think if we said a wine was zesty refreshing or crisp that is exactly what we're referring to that that feeling of, of acidity which we'll cover in a bit more depth in a moment. Um, I think dry and sweet is the only one we haven't mentioned. I don't really think we need to delve too deep into that. It's pretty obvious that we're talking about sweetness in wine. Now, the only thing I will do, I will add to this category because there is another sort of level of sweetness that we can talk about, which is a medium level of sweetness. So not fully unctuously sweet, but there is a little bit of noticeable sugar in the wine in, in its in its flavour. So I'm just going to bring us on to the, uh, the last of these slides on how to taste wine. Those are all fantastic suggestions. And as you correctly identified, we essentially lumped those words into five broad categories. And it's the combination of these categories which um, help us build a picture of how a wine tastes. So um, we'll start with body. Um, so, Anna, why do you think body is important when it comes to describing the flavour profile of wine? Why, why is it important that we say a wine is full or light body, for example? Well, I suppose it depends if you maybe want to eat, it, eat something with your wine. Would, that, would it make a difference then if it's something that would be, I, I don't know, if it's something that's like really heavy and you're having something that you eat something light, maybe it wouldn't work so well together? Absolutely. That's the most important point to consider when we're talking about body is, is food pairing. So if you take a really rich, powerful, full bodied wine and pair it with a very light dish, a, you know, a garden salad, it will completely overpower 
the um, the flavour of that dish. So we need to make sure that we've got some harmony between the body of the wine and the weight of the dish, because that's essentially what we're talking about, is how heavy or light the wine is. So um, we are going to be tasting a wine soon, and I want um, you to have something in mind, because I will be asking you what you think the body of the wine is. So a light-bodied wine will have the sort of weight of water in your mouth. So when you hold the wine in your mouth, it kind of feels a bit like water. It won't taste like water, fingers crossed, but it might feel like that. Um, for a medium-bodied wine, something in the middle, um, that's a little bit more akin to um, semi-skimmed milk. And then for a full-bodied wine, full-fat milk or cream. So that's a rough guideline when you're tasting a wine. Is it light, medium or full bodied? Um, does that all make sense? Yeah. Fantastic, I'll carry on. Um, so acidity, um, like I say, it's another category we look at. Um, I want you to imagine you're biting into a lemon, okay? And I want you to imagine that sensation. What do you think the effect is going to be in your mouth? Where are you going to feel acidity? What, what's your mouth going to do if you bit into a lemon? Um, I want to spit it out. Um, uh, I suppose you, you kind of like you cover, like. Yeah, you get like a tingling sensation, maybe down the sides of your tongue. Um, would you agree that your mouth would probably water? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's essentially your body's reaction. It's trying to neutralise the acidity. So your mouth waters excessively. And that's the sensation that we get when we eat or drink something that's acidic. Um, now, why, why is acidity important in wine? It is a good thing. I want you to think about um, why you would want your wine to be acidic rather than not. Have you got any idea? Um, no, not really. I would have assumed if I guess I'd always think I thought of acidity as something that's not very nice. Absolutely, Absolutely. and you're, you're, you're not alone in that. Um, so acidic or um, acid comes across as maybe a negative, um, has negative connotations, but actually it's a really great thing, um, both in food and wine. So to give you an idea, if you were to, um, you know, do some exercise, go for a run, go for a bike ride, you were hot, you've been sweating and you got back at home and you um, had a pint of orange juice in front of you or a pint of milkshake, which of those two drinks are you more likely to chug after a, a workout? Uh, probably the orange juice. I would agree with you there. I don't think I'd want a, a, <laughs> a milkshake after a workout. Um, both those drinks, both the milkshake and, and orange juice, are, are sweet. Um, but the key difference between them is that orange juice has loads of acidity. And it's that acidity that makes orange juice refreshing. It makes our mouths water, makes us want to take another sip. So in the right context, in the right amount, acidity can be a really, really positive aspect. And it's really, really important with wine as well. It's a, it makes wine refreshing and makes us want to take another sip and drink a little bit more. Um, does that all make sense, Anna, before I move on? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Great, okay. So the next category was sweetness. So we had sweet, uh, medium sweet or dry. So, um, Obviously, dry and sweet don't sound like opposites, but when it comes to wine, they are. So dry refers to, to a wine that has no uh, detectable sugar in it. Um, and that does make up the vast majority of wines that you'll, you'll taste. Um, some wines have a little bit of sugar. As I mentioned, those would be called medium or medium sweet. And then finally, we have fully sweet wines. So that could be dessert wines such as port. I don't know if you've ever tried port, but it has got quite a lot of sugar, it's noticeably sweet. Um, the key thing to bear in mind is that acidity and sweetness balance each other out really, really well. So if a wine does have sweetness, quite often it will have a fair amount of acidity to make sure that the wine is still refreshing and easy to drink. Um, okay, I'll come on to the next point, which is tannin. So jumping back to the previous slide, we have um, silky and smooth. So 
those are words that we're using to describe tannin in wine. Um, so moving back to this slide, tannins are contained within the skin of the grape. Um, the reason that um, uh, they're important is that they, as you identified, they can add a particular texture to a wine, a feeling in your mouth. Um, because they come from the skin of the grape though, they are really only important when we're talking about um, red or even really darkly colored rosé because um, we're getting the color and tannin out of the skin. So we won't talk about tannins when we taste white wines, but certainly for uh, red and some rosé wines, tannin can be a really, really important part of the, the flavor profile, the texture of the wine. Um, the other place that you'll encounter tannins is um, if you were to eat some unripe uh, bananas or if you were to brew a really, really strong cup of tea. Now, what do you think that really strong cup of tea or unripe banana would feel like when you were eating or drinking it? What sensation would you get? Yes, I don't know for me, whenever I think of unripe bananas, it would feel a bit curry, if that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah, that's a perfect description. Um, you might get a furry tongue or the insides of your cheeks might feel a bit furry. Um, yeah, and that's essentially that structure that we're getting from the skin of the grape or from the tea or from the, from the unripe fruit, you get this very mouth drying, astringent sensation. So if we're tasting a red wine or a dark coloured rosé, that's something we might look out for. Um, and if you do notice that, that's tannins. It's this, this substance in the skin of the grape giving the wine that, that sensation. Is that, do people like that in wine? Is that something that, I don't know, whenever you think of I've eaten an unripe banana, it doesn't sound very nice. Is that like, something that you want to have in wine? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to wine, obviously it really depends on personal preference. So some people won't particularly enjoy that sensation, other people will. Um, I think the key um, to tannin is that it has to be balanced within all the as other aspects of the wine. So bringing us on to flavours and aromas, if you have a wine that has um, quite delicate flavours, delicate aromas, it doesn't um, sort of knock you out with its, with its flavour profile. If you had a wine with lots of tannin, that would potentially overpower the overall sensation within the wine. So um, absolutely, you're, you're correct to, to raise that point. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is that tannins can make wines quite food friendly, because tannins and food do interact well. So a really tannic wine, for example, will work with a nice sort of hearty steak, steak pie, something like that, where the, the tannins can kind of work together with the food that you're eating. Um, but yes, it's a very important consideration in terms of, of personal care. Um, okay, so before we move on to tasting a wine, have you got any question on how to describe wine? Um, I don't know, I think I'm okay for now, we'll give it a shot. Okay, sounds good. Right, so um, just come out of that. So hopefully you have a wine sample board in front of you. Okay, so today we're uh, doing a tasting of Argentinian Malbec. Um, so the first thing we need to do is discuss uh, correct tasting techniques. So Anna, what do you think the first thing is that you do when you uh, taste a wine? What's step one? Smell it. Um, that's definitely the answer I get most often, but actually we go a step further. What do we do before we smell a wine? Pour it into the glass. <laughs> look at it, look at it. Perfect, yes. So we, we definitely pour it into the glass, but yes, once it's poured, we look at the wine. So um, do you have any idea why? we look at the wine, what's it going to tell us? Will it tell us how, how full-bodied it is, if it's, if it's dark or if it's light? That is quite a, a common um, uh, misconception, is that we can sort of uh, tell the body of the wine from the way it looks. So yes, you might think a, a deeper, darker wine is more full-bodied. In some cases it might be, but in others it 
might not. So it's kind of too inconsistent. Um, we can't really use color as, as a judge of how wine is going to feel or taste. Now, the actual reason is a lot simpler than that. We're checking for holes, making sure there's no bits of pork floating in it or anything more sinister, dead insects, something like that. Obviously, you don't want to put those in your mouth. Um, if the wine has a, a, a really cloudy or a brown tint to it, that can be another indication of a fault. Um, so that's simply the main reason that we look at wine is to just check that it's safe to, to move on and, and taste it. So the next step you um, have already said, it's to smell the wine. Um, but before we stick the glass to our nose, do you know what we might do before we bring the glass up to our nose to help us smell it? Yeah, absolutely. Got it in one. Um, it's something we've probably seen in, in films or on telly. Um, we swirl the wine around. Now, a lot of people think this is just so you look clever and pretentious, um, which, of course, maybe that is your agenda. But no, there is an actual reason for swilling the, the, uh, the wine in the glass. Um, any idea what that is? The reason we do it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, warm it up, maybe? If it's red, I don't know. Uh, no, it's not to warm it up. That might be a, a, an effect as a result of, of holding the glass and, and swirling around. But no, it's actually to get oxygen into the wine. If we get the wine, um, it helps release those aromas, sends them out of the glass and makes them easier to smell. So that's all we're doing. We're agitating the wine in the glass to make it easier to pick out those, those aromas. So I'd like you to, um, as you're doing now, give it a swirl. And I want you to gently raise the, the glass to your nose and have a gentle smell of the wine. And can you give me a few aromas, um, some of those specific things we were talking about earlier, um, things that immediately spring to, to mind when you smell this Malbec? Um, I guess it smells quite, quite fruity, like a bit like like jam like yeah absolutely i would agree it's quite jammy quite fruity let's let's delve a little bit deeper so if it is a bit jammy what kind of jam are we talking blackcurrant jam strawberry jam raspberry jam or a combination i think like black blackcurrant or blackberry like something like that. Yep, no, I'd completely agree with you. Lots of dark fruits, blackberry, blackcurrant, maybe a bit of black cherry even. I don't even know if they make black cherry jam, but yeah, those sort of jammy, rich, dark fruit aromas. Um, can you smell anything there? I'm getting something a bit spicy, perhaps. I don't know if you're picking up on that. Maybe like a bit, like almost like, like pepper. Really like like peppery spice. That's exactly what I was thinking. That sort of black pepper, like dark spices. Um, I would even say, even within that sort of spicy category, we could talk about licorice. You know, there's this sort of almost um, you know really rich dark spiciness to it. Um, but yeah, we've got you know black fruit, dark fruit, uh, black pepper, a bit of licorice. Uh, have you got anything else to add? Anything else you can smell in this wine? Um, I don't think so. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Like, like separate out the different the different smells. Look, to be honest, we're off to a a, a really really good start here. Um, obviously, there's only so much you can pick up from just smelling the wine which are those flavors and aromas. So, um, we're going to keep all of those um, those words in our head. Um, but we're going to move on to tasting the wine. And it's when we taste the wine, that's when we can start thinking about um, looking at the acidity, because that's something that we sense, uh, you know, whether or not we can feel the tannins, we can discuss the weight of the wine, the body of the wine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you correct tasting techniques. So actually putting the wine in your mouth um, and the technique uh, I'm going to show you and then I'm going to ask you what I did and why. So there's going to be a few little things that I do. 
and hopefully you can tell me why I do them. So um, I'll get straight into it. OK, so there's three main things that I did there. Can you just identify those three things first of all? What, what did I do? Um, like instructed. <laughs> I don't know if there's another word to use for that. And then um, kind of wash it around with like mouthwash and then spat it out. Perfect. Yep, those were the three things I did. After taking a sip, I slurped air through the wine. Um, do you know why I slept in air? <laughs> it's basically exactly the same reason that we um, swirl the glass um, before smelling. So it's essentially to release the, the aromas from the wine and it sends them to the back of our throat and up through our, our nose, which is where we pick up those individual flavours. So that's why we slurp. Um, it's kind of like a backward whistle. It takes a bit of practice, but... Um, as long as you don't inhale it, you'll be fine. Um, the next point, as you said, I sloshed the, the wine around almost like mouthwash. And why do you think I would have done that? Sorry, say that again, Anna. To, to taste it better or taste it more? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so to, to, to give a bit more detail to that, yes, it is to, to taste more. Um, but essentially, we pick up different things, um, different parts of the profile of one of our mouth. So, for example, if there's any sweetness, we'll pick that up on the tip of our tongue because that's where our sweet taste buds are. Like we said about the lemon, when we bite into it, we'll get a buzzing sensation down the sides of our, our cheeks um, and you, you'll feel your mouth watering. So we want to make sure we send wine, you know, to the sides of our mouth. Um, uh, and yeah, the body of the wine as well and that and those tannins, so those more textural or weight based qualities will feel those around our mouth. So, you know, like that strong cup of tea, you might get a furriness on the insides of your cheeks or on your tongue. So we want to make sure that we're not missing anything, which is why we slosh the, the wine around. Uh, and then finally, I spat the wine out. And why would I do that? Did you have to drive? Uh, well, yes, maybe I do have to drive later, but essentially the reason we spit the wine out is that's the key difference between tasting wine and drinking wine. So drinking wine, obviously, we'll swallow it. But when we're tasting, um, particularly if we're tasting a number of wines back to back, um, if, we're, if we're actually drinking the wine, the more you drink, the more your senses are dulled. And obviously, you know, you can start feeling a little bit loose. So we, um, so we spit the wine out, keeps us sort of... Um, with it and allows us to continue to taste wine um, to the best of our ability. So that's the, the fundamental difference between drinking and, and tasting wine. So I would like you to um, give it a go, Anna. So we had all of those dark fruit flavours, a bit of peppery spice. Um, so I want you to taste the wine now and have a think about those other elements of wine as well. See if you pick up any other. And I'm going to have another taste as well. I can see you have very good technique from here. Good job. First try. Um, it's definitely, I could definitely feel like my mouth watering, so I assume then it means it's acidic. But does that make sense for a red wine to be acidic? Absolutely, yep. All wines have acidity, irrespective of, of colour. So, yes, even though the examples we, we gave of lemons or, or oranges, um, you know, grapes and dark grapes are, are no different. We want that refreshing quality, irrespective of the colour of wine. So, um, yeah, so I would say, you know, we could just pick one of our nice wine words that describes that acidity. Rather than saying acidic, I would personally say this is refreshing. Would you agree? Yeah. Great. OK, um, so let's move on to the body of the wine. So thinking about that analogy, is it the same sort of weight as water or is it more 
you know, medium like semi skim milk or full bodied like full fat milk? What 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 are your thoughts? I think maybe maybe it's between medium and full, but I wouldn't have said it was like it wasn't like full fat milk, but it wasn't. It was definitely more than more than water. It wasn't light. Yep, no, I would I would agree with you. I think we could we could say that the top end of, of medium bodied would be absolutely fine for this one. Um, what about the tannins? Did you notice any sort of furry sensation in your mouth? Yeah, definitely like especially like around like your teeth sort of like a bit sticky kind of. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, to describe a wine that has noticeable tannins, you could say something like it's quite um, powerful or it's robust those kind of words which are positive they are still describing the fact that there is tannin there is some texture here um did you notice any sweetness any sugary tingle on your tongue i don't, I don't think so no i would agree it's a dry wine and pretty much all red wines are dry so um yeah no that's great and then finally have you got any flavors or aromas to add did it did it taste how it smelled I think so. Like I, th I think it was definitely more fruity than it was spicy. So I'd say it was more, I guess, towards like the berries and the like black and blackberry than than like black pepper. Yep. No, I would completely agree with you. So what I'd like you to do now is, with all of that in mind, so the structural elements like the acidity or the tannins, the flavors, the aromas, I'd like you to pick your favourite three or four words which accurately sum up this Argentinian Malbec? Um, medium bodied, refreshing and fruity. But if I have to pick a fruit, I'd say black ring. Perfect. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Refreshing, medium bodied with flavours of dark fruit, black ring, for example. Um, yeah, so basically when you're tasting any wine, irrespective of colour, have all of those different elements in, in mind. Um, go quite detailed. Think of a detailed tasting note. Maybe you'll think of 10 or 15 things. But the key is when you're discussing this with a colleague, a friend, a customer, the main thing is to keep it nice and succinct. So what are the three or four key sort of descriptive words that you would use to accurately describe a wine. Um, so that concludes the how to taste and describe session. Have you got any questions Anna before we sign off? No I think I think I'm all right. I'm good thank you. Great well well done and I look forward to seeing you for the next session. Thanks. Thanks Anna. Thanks for taking the time to watch this short introduction to the Bibendum customer training team. Hope you found that demonstration interesting and perhaps maybe you learn one or two new things along the way. For more details on any of the courses that we do, head over to the training hub on the Bibendum website, or alternatively, follow Bibendum on Instagram for more training content.